Gibraltar, often referred to as the Rock, a country of its own reckoning, remains a British territory. It even has its own Marks and Spencer. The country even has its own football federation with a team to boot, yet truly woeful one. However, I said however, what if one of the hottest strikers in the world today was actually a Gibraltarian? That's right, I went there. What if Harry, England's saviour of football, Kane, was actually from Gibraltar? Let's waste no more time with the build-up and take a look, shall we? Hello folks, welcome to another FM18 experiment. This time taking a look at the prospect of Harry Kane being a Gibraltarian. That's right, folks, in the Mediterranean. That's a part of the British... Commonwealth, perhaps? I don't even know if that's the right terminology, but you know what I mean. A small island that is really, really awful at football, always getting battered by everybody. But in this experiment, we're going to try and see if his inclusion as a Gibraltarian will have any effect on Gibraltar as a football team. So let's take a look at him in their normal database, the same database that you have at your place uh, and the same database that we have on our place before any tweaks have been added. So here he is, 23 years old, out of English uh, descent, with 19 caps, 8 goals, valued at 62 million, part of Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, and like I said, it's at the very start of the game, 26th of June, 2017. So here is England currently 13th in the world before any tweaks have been made to the database. As for his adopted country, they're currently ranked 205th in the world. So what we're going to do now is jump into the, uh, the vortex, into our parallel universe, where there is a... Uh, Gibraltarian Harry Kane. So here we are in my parallel universe, exactly the same date, 26th of June 2017. And now we're going to bring up Harry Kane in this special universe. So here he is in the parallel universe, 23 years old, 19 caps, 8 goals, still valued at 62 million and still contracted to Tottenham Hotspur. So let's take a look at Gibraltar themselves. So currently ranked 205, so no change there uh, for Gibraltar. As for England, and no change. And I wasn't expecting anything, but no change uh, as well. They are still ranked 13th in the world. So we're going to hop forward 12 months in the back of the real world and see how far England have progressed with Harry Kane. So here we are back in the real world with an English Harry Kane. Let's check out how he did in his first season in our experiment. So here he is, 24 years of age, 32 caps, 25 goals for England, currently valued at £74 million pounds and still contracted to Tottenham. As for his goal-scoring traits, 20 goals in 30 appearances. Let's take a look at England. They're currently ranked 20th in the world, so that's a drop of seven places since uh, the start of the experiment. Let's take a look at why that happened. Well, they made it to the World Cup and they seem to progress quite handsomely through the group stages, winning three out of three, not even conceding a goal before a 4-4 thriller against Cameroon knocked them out in the second round after penalty. So I'm sure that's had a major effect on uh, why they have dropped seven places. And Harry Kane is amongst the scorers throughout the World Cup. He, in fact, he scored in every game of the World Cup. One goal there. He's got a hat-trick of penalties against Honduras. And he got another hat-trick against Ghana. And plus two goals in the knock in that knockout game against Cameroon. So he was he was actually pretty decent in the World Cup. He might have even gone on to win the Golden Boot. But we're not going to take a look. Let's have a look at Gibraltar. As for Gibraltar, they are now ranked 209th. That's also a drop in four places. But really, I don't expect them to have played anything of any competitive nature. They got eliminated a long time ago in fact they haven't even scored a goal all season uh so hopefully that's going to change in the parallel universe where they take on uh hopefully that will change in the parallel universe with a harry kane up front so back in the parallel universe with harry kane 12 months on into the experiments take a look at him as a gibraltarian here he is 24 years old 28 caps eight goals uh 66 million so it's a little cheaper the cheaper player than he is for england let's take a look at his statistics 37 uh appearances and 20 goals so he played more but scored the same amount of goals as for gibraltar let's take a look at them they are now well they're still ranked 209th in the world so still drop of four places with the inclusion of harry kane uh, but let's have a look and see how they fared um this season uh, they scored a goal against Liechtenstein in a friendly. Um, and in fact, they scored another goal in the World Cup qualifiers with uh, Liam Walker. So Harry Kane yet to get off the mark in, in the experiment for Gibraltar. But hopefully that will change as we go into this European League Division Group 3. Maybe they can compete with the big boys 
uh, well, not really the big boys, but the, the small small fry, and maybe they can come up top as one of the uh, main threats in this new European League division. D Group 3. Blah, that's a mouthful. As for Hurricane's old team, they are now 11th. So that's an improvement of two places without Harry Kane. And why is that? Then? Let's take a look at the, how what went on uh, this season. So they made it through to the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Again, losing on penalties. It's, it's just the way it is for England. They lost uh, against Portugal. But they plowed through the group stages once again without conceding a goal. Uh, beating Honduras 6-0. Drawing with Holland 0-0. And also uh, taking on Argentina. That was a group of death and a half. Uh, and they also continued to, to play... Uh, their way through the friendlies. And then, look, they they only conceded goals against Chile in open play, 3-3. So that's not a bad effort. So let's hop forward another 12 months and take a look at how both teams or both nations are getting on now. Here we are, season two in the experiment in the real world with an English Harry Kane. Let's take a look at how he got on this season. 45 caps, 28 goals for England, valued at 77 million, still a Tottenham uh, so no change there. As for his goal scoring exploits, 16 goals in 34 appearances. That's uh, down four goals, but he played four more. As for England, they are now ranked 13th in the world. So let's back up seven spots. Um, let's see how they, fo they fared over the season. They are in deep into Euro qualifiers territory uh, in Group B. Can we have a look at Group B? Yes, they are top of the pops. With 10 points from a possible uh, 12. So they dropped a couple points. Maybe possibly against Belgium uh, in that uh, group. Meanwhile, in the Division A Group 1, they looks like they got battered by Switzerland, Italy. Uh, Switzerland again, 4-1 and Italy. So they, they came bottom of their group. So I expect them to be in Group 2 the next time that comes around. But they did uh, win some other friendlies. As for Gibraltar, they are now ranked 204th in the world, and that is without Harry Kane, like I said. That's an improvement of five places. Uh, let's take a look at what went on for them. Back in the European Division Group D3 business, they beat Liechtenstein 2-0, lost to Belarus, lost to Latvia, lost to Liechtenstein. So they won one game. So they very won probably their first ever game. And, uh, yeah, some, a couple of goal scorers as well. Uh, you know, in, in this uh, competition. And then kicking on into the European Qualifiers Group C. As for the European Qualifiers Group C, they are still getting battered and they are still bottom of their group. So let's hop forward to the same time frame, uh, but with Harry Kane playing for Gibraltar. <laughs> so here we are in the parallel universe with a Gibraltarian Harry Kane. Let's bring him up. This is season two. Here he is, uh, 38 caps, 12 goals, uh, and he's valued at 70 million uh, still at Tottenham. Let's have a look at his career stats. He scored 15 goals in 34 games. That is one less than he did as an Englishman. As for uh, Gibraltar themselves, they are now ranked 200th in the world. So that's an improvement of nine places. Let's take a look at why that is. In Division D, Group 3, they won one game against the Faroe Islands. Obviously, I think there was a different, different uh, opposition. Faroe Islands, they won. They lost against Belarus, lost against uh, Macedonia, lost against Faroe Islands. So it's, and they drew against Belarus. So that's one one result better than in the real world. So Harry Kane's inclusion, he's actually scored three goals uh, during that uh, little mini mini tournament. Uh, as there for the European qualifiers, Group D, still getting battered. But they did get one goal by Harry Kane against Ireland in the 6-1 thrashing at home. So, yeah. It does not, the early stages of this experiment do not look good uh, for Gibraltar, even with Harry Kane leading the line. Meanwhile, for England, they are currently eighth without Harry Kane. So that's an improvement of um, three places since the last season. And it's also an improvement of six places compared to the real England with Harry Kane, the same time frame in the other game save. So... Uh, it just goes to show that maybe having Harry Kane is a bit of an anchor to the nation of choice. Um, but that's just, you know, that's just a little bit of early insight into this experiment. So let's take a look at what went on for England. So they have taken part in the Division A Group 4 business and they lost to Germany, beat Croatia. Uh, they lost to Germany again and they lost to Croatia. So they look like they finished bottom of their group. 
Uh, they also lost to Germany. No, they lost to Poland in a friendly. They battered Hungary in a fair friendly. As for the European qualifiers, they've started off uh, on a iffy schedule. So it's looking a little hairy for England in Group A. They currently sit them, find themselves fourth, a whopping five points adrift of Ukraine. So that early insight of uh, 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 England lus Harry Kane might be a, a flash in the pan. And when we kick on a little bit further, maybe, just maybe, they might find themselves not even qualifying for the European Championships. So into Season 3 for Harry Kane as an Englishman. Let's take a look at him. Here he is, 26 years of age, 58 caps, 40 goals, valued at 77 million, still at Tottenham Hotspur. As for his career statistics, 19 goals for Harry Kane, and that is in 37 appearances. Uh, it's up uh, three years from last season, um, but he did play three games more. As for England themselves, they are now ranked 19th in the world. So that's another huge drop of six places. It's huge in the grand scheme of things when you think that uh, they were as high as eighth in the parallel universe with a England-less, a Gibraltarian Harry Kane. So let's take a look at what went wrong for England over the past 12 months or so. The European Group A, this is the European Championships. They lost to Czech Republic, lost to Italy, and they beat Wales. So it looks like they got eliminated in the Euros. Uh, yeah, it's still going on, and England are not in it. Scotland are in it, though, which is bizarre. Uh, meanwhile, let's back it up a hair. Euro qualifiers, Group B. They finished second. Let's take a look at Gibraltar. So a Harry Kane list Gibraltar are ranked 206th in the world. That's a drop of two places uh, 12 months ago. And it's also a drop of six places when you consider a Harry Kane Gibraltar. Let's have a look at what's been going on with them in the football year. They scored a goal uh, against Kazan. That's a highlight. And they... Pff, they lost each and every one of their games for European qualifiers. Group C does not even look like they scored a goal. Minus 40 goal difference. So they, I would go to say that they are the worst. Would they, would they be the worst team in Europe? In, they could be probably one of the worst teams in world football. So that's a, that's a big statement right there. Anyway, let's take a look at a Gibraltarian version of Harry Kane. Same time frame. So here we are in the third season uh, of the Gibraltarian Harry Kane experiment. Let's take a look at him as uh, how, what's went on in the past 12 months. Here he is, 26 years of age, 47 caps, 19 goals for his country of Gibraltar. As for his career statistics, 37 appearances, 16 goals. That's one better than a Gibraltarian Harry Kane last season, but he did play three games more, but it's three goals less than the English Harry Kane. As for Gibraltar themselves, let's take a look at them. They are now ranked 184th in the world. That is a massive jump of, what is it, 16 places for Gibraltar. That is balmy. Let's take a look at what went on for Gibraltar this past season. Look at that. Some goals by Harry Kane. Uh, okay. Qualifiers Group D. Lost, 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 lost. They picked up a point against Liechtenstein. They beat Liechtenstein. Uh, and he also scored against... So, they, they've been competing a little bit more uh, frivolously. Obviously, they picked up a point against Liechtenstein, like, three points against uh, them at Gibraltar. Then they took on Azerbaijan and friendly, gave them a game, 3-2. Took on Malta, gave them a game, 2-1. Lost against Latvia, 3-0. So not bad. Uh, so there's some good opportunities for them maybe into this European League the second time around. Uh, so very exciting times. 184th place in the world. Let's take a look at England. So here are England, 14th in the world. That is a drop of six places uh, since the last time we saw uh, England, uh, 12 months prior. So what's gone wrong for England? Uh, over the past 12 months, they have taken on... No, they made it to the Euros, despite their precarious situation. And they made it actually through the group stages, beating uh, Bosnia and Slovenia, but losing to Spain, eventually getting knocked out uh, by Holland in the second round. Before that, they had some friendlies. Uh, beat Holland and they lost to France and they uh, also beat Romania. Uh, so they picked up their game in the second half of that European qualifier. So um, I guess, I guess uh, it's actually when you flip it over to the other side of the England Harry Kane, it's five places better off than where they are right now in this time zone. So it's it's still an improvement despite dropping six places. Let's kick forward to season four and see how everyone's getting on there. <laughs> 
So here we are, season four of the Harry Kane experiment, back in the real world with an English Harry Kane. Let's take a look at how we got on in season four. So 68 caps, 52 goals, still valued at 77 million. Let's take a look at his uh, statistics for the season. 38 games and 16 goals. That's a drop of three goals since last season. It's the same amount of goals he scored last season as a Gibraltarian. Uh, but one game more, so technically a little bit less. I'm not even looking at the averages, so I do apologise. Maybe, uh, I guess, his first season as an Englishman is probably his best season thus far. As for England, let's take a look at them. They are now ranked 17th in the world, so it's an improvement of two places uh, since last season. Let's take a look at why that is the case. Uh, it's now World Cup qualification. They were in the Europe Division B Group 3, where they beat Iceland 4-1. Bit of a bit of revenge there. Uh, they beat Austria in a friendly. They beat Greece 3-1. They beat Iceland again. They beat Greece. So they won all their games. So they're going to be back into Group 2, I think. Took on Turkey and they won 3-1. World Cup qualifiers is going on. And look to be in cruise control. Uh, taking on Turkey, uh, Finland, Israel, Liechtenstein and Slovenia. And it looks like they are top of the pops. Yes, they are. 12 points out of 12. Let's take a look at Gibraltar. So they are, they are ranked 208th in the world. That's a drop of two places since last year. Let's take a look at what's been going on with them the past 12 months. So still looks like doom and gloom, but they did score a goal in the Euro European League Division D Group 1 against Malta, but they lost all six games. Uh, so that's understandable that they have dropped the two places. As for World Cup qualification, started off pretty bad. Four out of four, no real uh glimmer of hope for Gibraltar. Let's take a look at Gibraltar with the influence of Harry Kane leading the line in the same time zone. So here we are, season four with the Gibraltarian Harry Kane. Let's take a look at how he got on this season. So he is 27 years old, 57 caps, 21 goals, valued at 69 million, still under the books of Tottenham Hotspur. As for his season, he scored 16 goals, which is the same he scored last season, and 37 games. Exactly the same record as he did last season. So that's one game better than he did as an Englishman. But let's take a look. Uh, his average ratings are pretty woeful. His first season's not too bad, um, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty hairy. Uh, the past, well, when I say hairy, I'm, I'm comparing to, to the first season. Uh, meanwhile, let's take a look at Gibraltar. They are now ranked 194th in the world. So that's a drop of 10 places. So that doesn't look good. Uh, let's take a look at what went wrong for them this season. Obviously, it's World Cup year. The European League Division D Group 1. They lost against Georgia 8-0. That's a bit embarrassing. Lost against Lithuania 2-1. They drew with the Faroe Islands 1-1. Uh, they beat the Faroe Islands 3-0. Uh, and they lost against Lithuania and Georgia. So they must have finished at least, yeah, it's not too bad considering, that's, you know, they, they didn't finish rock bottom. As for the qualifying for the World Cup stage, they beat Luxembourg at their place. So I'm not entirely sure why they dropped. I, I would have considered that an improvement. Uh, they've got to take on Luxembourg again um, later on. Uh, so hopefully, uh, let's have a look at Slovenia. Is that doable? Do you think? Perhaps they, they might. They might take another. Might take a point here, uh, and they, if they, they should beat Luxembourg if they beat them at their place. But. The next 12 months will be interesting to see how they progressed. And maybe, just maybe, they can they can beat their current high of 184th in the world. Meanwhile, let's take a look at England. They are now ranked 15th in the world. That is a, a low point for England in this parallel universe with a Gibraltarian Harry Kane. That's one place less than they were last year. Let's take a look at what went wrong this season for England. European League Division B Group 1. They uh, beat Slovakia 3-0, beat Montenegro 2-0, beat Bosnia 3-1, beat Slovakia 4-0, beat Montenegro 3-0. So they must have topped that group to get themselves back into Division A, I'm sure. They also took on Italy 2-2 in a friendly. Uh, and as for the qualifying for the World Cup, uh, they beat Portugal, beat Iran, and another friendly beat Kosovo, doubleheader, 3-0, 3-1, respectively. So I don't know what went wrong. They, they seem to have won all their games. Maybe it's the after effects of the uh, Euros. Um, so I expect them to improve, and I also expect um, Gibraltar to improve on their current rankings of 15th for England and 194th. Uh, for Gibraltar. We'll take a look at those shortly, but right now it's jump forward 12 months back in the real world with an English Harry Kane. 
So here we are, five seasons in with an English Harry Kane. Let's take a look at how he's fared uh, in his club football. 28 years of age, 80 caps, 60 goals, valued at 75 million, still in the books at Tottenham Hotspur. As for his goal game ratio, he scored 18 goals in 34 games. As for England, let's take a look at them. That's now ranked 17th in the world, so it's a no move uh, for England. Let's take a look at what went wrong for them or what even went right for them this past 12 months. In the World Cup qualifiers, they continue to dominate, uh, except they lost to Slovenia, which might have caused some problems. Uh, but they made it to the World Cup. In fact, they're still at the World Cup. We are still, um, still going on. And they made it through the group stages, beating Costa Rica, losing to Brazil, and drawing against Switzerland. So not the, not, the, not the prettiest way to make it through. And they take on Portugal in the knockout round. Let's take a look at Gibraltar. And Gibraltar are now 211th in the world. That is a record low across both universes. Uh, that is pretty piss poor. That is, how, how low is that? 211th. That is the lowest possible uh, ranking uh, with points. Uh, then you're into the, the, the nether regions of Northern Marina Isles, Tuvalu, uh, Micronesia, Zanzibar, uh, Guadalupe, Kiribati. Some of these countries I didn't even know they existed. Uh, right above them is Anguilla, British Virgin Islands, San Marino. That's an interesting one. And Andorra. Uh, they're both European countries. So Liechtenstein are better than them and 250 in the world. So pretty low for Gibraltar. So it must have been all doom and gloom for them. Let's take a look at what's been on in the last 12 months. They did score against Poland, which is a pretty big achievement, losing only 3-1. But they did get battered by Portugal uh, and no other goals whatsoever um, throughout the past 12 months. Uh, they do take on, uh, there's a four group challenge in the European League Division D Group 4 in the final season. We'll take a look at that uh, shortly. But right now let's top forward into the parallel universe, same time frame, 2022. <laughs> So here we are in the parallel universe with a Gibraltarian Harry Kane. Let's take a look at how he fared the past 12 months uh, as a Gibraltarian. So here he is, 28 years old, 65 caps, 24 goals, valued at 74 million, still in the books at Tottenham Hotspur. How did he fare this season? He scored 17 goals in 37 games. That's three games more than he did as an Englishman. It's one goal less uh, as a Gibraltarian. As for the country of Gibraltar, they are now ranked 179th in the world. That is an improvement since last year of around about 15 places. That is in the regions. Oh, let's take a look. It's going to take me a while still to get down there. Uh, where are we? 179th. There they are. Gibraltar competing with the likes of Somalia, South Sudan. They are better than Sri Lanka. These are actual countries. Tonga, uh, Mongolia, the Cook Islands, Liechtenstein. Uh, who is a rock bottom of the thing? San Marino and Andorra. Look at that. Making uh, Taking up the rear uh, for Europe and world football. So pretty good for Gibraltar. Yeah. Pretty good for Gibraltar. And let's take a look at what went right for them this past 12 months. Uh, they were they did make some progress and they did pick up a win against Luxembourg. They did lose to Luxembourg and they didn't really make any headway whatsoever uh, in the... Um, in the other games, Harry Kane did score some more goals, penalty spots and all that kind of stuff. And they did lose to Estonia. So despite the, the win against Luxembourg in this thing, I'm sure they finished rock bottom of Group 1. Yes, they did. Luxembourg ousted them by a point, which they got against Albania. So realistically, Gibraltar could, in theory, beat the likes of Luxembourg and even compare with Albania, considering they guys drew and all that kind of stuff. As for England, they are now ranked 7th in the world. That is a jump of eight places for them uh, since we last were with them uh, in this universe. They were 15th. So let's take a look at how they've fared this past 12 months. Let's hop it back. Don't, don't you dare look at that. In the World Cup qualifiers, they continued their strong performance. They drew with Portugal, beat around 4-0 in a friendly, beat Armenia, beat Slovakia. Uh, and they continued on with some friendlies. 3-0 against Ecuador, 3-0 against Morocco, 5-0 against Algeria. Into the World Cup now. Actually, they got knocked out by Brazil in the second round, but they did qualify to that second round, beating Egypt, losing to Belgium, and drawing to the USA. So it's a pretty similar uh, set of results compared to the England with Harry Kane. Uh, and actually, they are still in it, technically. They're in the second round. That game was not played. Uh, we'll have to take a look at how that all fared. So we'll hop forward 12 more months with an English Harry Kane and see how he has fared in the final season of this experiment. <laughs> 
So here we are, season six uh, in the Hurricane experiment in the real world within an English Hurricane. Let's see how we fared in the final season as an Englishman. His score is up to 94 caps, 72 goals for England. As for, he's still valued at 72 million and still in the books at Tottenham Hotspur. As for his record, 37 goals, 21 games. That's his highest ever in this whole experiment, both as an Englishman and as a Gibraltarian. Um, so that's a good, that's actually his best season thus far. He's actually reached his peak. I think he's 29 years of age uh, now. So he's eclipsed his peak. He's actually going to be 30 before the start of the new season. So we could start eventually seeing his decline. Let's have a look at England. They are now ranked ninth in the world in this, uh, in, as an Englishman. So that's a jump of eight places, is it? Is it a jump? Yes, it's a jump of eight places. Let's take a look at how that is, or why that is, should I say. Uh, they made it to the World Cup final, would you believe it, with Harry Kane. Uh, they did sidestep Portugal. They beat Germany 1-0. Harry Kane on the score sheet. So that's a massive uh, reason why you should have Harry Kane, basically. Uh, then they took on Croatia in the semifinals, winning 4-2, only losing to Brazil 2-1 in the final. So it's still a little concerned that they're only ninth uh, and they made it to the World Cup final. But anyway, then they kicked on into the next season with a friendly against Mexico 2-2 before beating uh, Croatia. Uh, losing to France, uh, drawing against Croatia and losing to France in the, this is probably what's what's hit them hard. They, they must have been higher than that because uh, they finished um, second in their group into the new season. Now they have started the European qualifiers in pretty good form, thrashing uh, Andorra 9-0. But let's go back a hair. Ninth in the world. Uh, so they were 17th, 8th in the world. So the highest they were ever in this whole experiment has has been eighth has been eighth but currently standing at ninth let's take a look at gibraltar they are now ranked 211th in the world still rock bottom of the uh countries and uh, the highest they ever were in this uh in this universe was 201st um so that is it's been it's, they've never eclipsed they've never broke the 200 barrier so that's pretty Pretty abysmal, really. Let's take a look at what went wrong for them this past 12 months. The European League Division thing. Uh, lost every one of their games uh, into the qualifiers. And they've lost every one of those games thus far. Not even scoring a goal. So it's pretty dismal. Anyway, let's hop forward in the parallel universe with a job old Harry and Harry Kane. And let's wrap this experiment up. So here we are with the last season of our experiment. With the Gibraltarian Harry Kane, season number six. Let's take a look at how he's fared as a club player. He has 75 caps, 28 goals for his country of Gibraltar, still valued at £70 million and still under the books at Tottenham Hotspur. As for his career stacks, pretty abysmal this season. Eight goals, just eight goals, 34 games. Let's take a look at Gibraltar. They are now ranked 179th in the world, so no change whatsoever. But let's take a look over the, uh, the whole spectrum. They started, obviously, way down, 205th. Their highest ever was 171st in the world. So that's pretty decent. Let's have a look at what's gone on for them the past 12 months. Uh, Division D Group 3. They beat Liechtenstein. Did we see this already? They beat Liechtenstein twice. They beat Liechtenstein twice. They drew against Latvia. Let's have a look at them. They finished third in a group of four. Ahead of Liechtenstein. So that's a good boost for them. Into the World Cup or European qualifiers. Start off pretty abysmal. No real change there. Scoring one goal against Macedonia, uh, and I don't expect them to make it anywhere near qualifying for this major championship. Let's take a look at England, and England are right back down to 13th in the world, uh, following their heights of 7th. Let's take a look at where they ranked. So they were 7th for a good chunk early on. Let's have a look at what went wrong for them over the past 12 months. Uh, knocked out against Brazil, would you believe it? Into the European League Division A Group uh, 3, they won against Romania. Lost against Germany, uh, won against Romania, lost against Germany. So they didn't win that. Uh, into the European qualifiers, started off okay. Three wins out of four, losing to Denmark. Uh, but they should qualify from that Group C. Well, maybe, maybe just maybe. They've got, to, they've got to stop Denmark. So that concludes this experiment. In summary, it just goes to show how important a player Harry Kane is for his club. Tottenham Hotspur and for his countries England and in our case Gibraltar obviously Gibraltar never really broke uh, any uh, records or really made it that far in the world rankings but for them to, to jump 
what is it, 35 places uh, with the inclusion of Harry Kane. It just goes to show how such an influential player he is to such a small country of Gibraltar. As for the major footballing nation of England, they made it to the World Cup final, obviously losing to powerhouse uh, Brazil. Uh, and they also reached the dizzy heights of, I think, 8th or was it 7th in the world. So, major player, major influence. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll give you a bang up to date with all FM18 videos moving forward. We've got plenty more experiments in the pipeline, so stick around. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. But if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'll give you a bang up to date with all FM18 content moving forward.